Hey everybody! So today I am finally making the video that one of the videos that I keep saying I'm gonna make it's about POTS and what that stands for is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It is a disorder with the autonomic nervous system which is what is responsible for controlling things that we don't consciously control, like our breathing, our heart rate, blood pressure. Um, and you know, there's more to it than that. I'm still learning. Um, I have always had like kind of a high heart rate, but it would, you know, be like below a hundred. Um, I mean, that was like even in high school when I was running five miles every day, except Sunday and, um, just kind of dealt with it. Just, you know, thought my heart ran a little faster, but it was still like normal. If I went to a doctor or something, it might be a little bit over a hundred. Um, just cause I always get nervous when I go to the doctor. I always have. Um, even though I do seem to like going to the doctor because they help me usually. But so basically what happened was, um, you know, I've disappeared for a few years. I was really depressed and I wanted to lose weight because I got really big, wanted to lose weight. So I started doing an intermittent fasting diet. I did, um, like a version of intermittent fasting called alternate day fasting. So you have like one day where you have more calories and then the next day you have a lower amount of calories. And if you want to do that, you know, just talk to your doctor first so that they can tell you like based on your height and your weight and your underlying medical conditions. They can tell you, if you want to try that, what your calorie intake should be for each day. But I did that. I started February 9th, 2021, last year. And um, in February of this year, one year later, I quit the intermittent fasting. And, um, well, right before I quit it, I started exercising. Uh, my husband started exercising with me. And so we would go on walks. He ordered us an elliptical for when I just really can't leave the house um, or on days when I'm having more symptoms from the POTS uh, so that I'm here. And if I started getting sick or having really bad symptoms from it, you know, I could always stop and go lay down on the couch. And you'll understand that a little bit better in just a couple minutes. So I started exercising um, from the past um, at a previous healthcare group system in the area. Um, I had went because my heart was just beating like crazy all the time. And then like, it seemed like it was more in the evenings. My heart would just start pounding and racing. And so they did, you know, EKGs. They had me wear a halter monitor, echocardiogram, and then sent me to one of their cardiologists. And oh, I also had really bad heart palpitations, um, like where it feels like your heart is skipping a beat. And I just, that freaks me out. I mean, the whole thing did, but that really freaks me out. Um, so they had like started me on a beta blocker, like, uh, a tenolol, 25 milligrams is the lowest they make, lowest dose. Um, but they just had me cut it in half and take 12 and a half milligrams. So I do all the testing. I go to the cardiologist for, you know, a follow up and interpretation of my tests. And he's like, well, you had 505 PVCs, which is a type of, you know, like where your heart skips a beat and one PAC. And, um... I'm like, wow, that's a lot. And he was like, oh, we don't worry about it until it's like 15,000 a day. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, you just have a fast heart rate and you just have palpitations. So just increase the atenolol to 25 milligrams. You'll be fine. You know, all the other heart medications like have lots of side effects and like they're horrible and you don't really want those and you don't really need those. And you don't even have to like follow up with me. You can just follow up with your PCP, your primary care physician. So I did that and I was on that for a few years and I'm thinking possibly because I was bigger, maybe my blood pressure was like higher because I mean a beta blocker is a heart, I mean a blood pressure medication and it also, you know, slows down your heart and it also helps with palpitations and, you know, I think some other off-label uses. Um, so I started exercising. And we were, at first we just started out walking because we were waiting. It was like over a month before the elliptical came after we ordered it. And I started having these weird episodes while we were walking where I just felt kind of dizzy and, um, 
kind of like slightly tunnel vision a little bit, like not real bad, just a little bit, like seeing sparkles. And I remember one day I just had this really weird feeling like right below my sternum, like right below my heart or whatever in the very top of my stomach. And it was just this weird nauseated type feeling, but like not the same kind of nauseated you get like if you eat bad food and get food poisoning or something. And I felt like my blood sugar was really low or something. And you know, I'm not diabetic or anything. And, um, I just prayed so hard for God to let me make it home. Like, please let me make it home. Please don't let me pass out. I have, ne I had never passed out in my life that I know of. So we made it home. I just started eating a ton of food. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm getting a little blood sugar. That's what I need. And you know, I sat down and kind of started feeling a little better. And we walked a few times during this period. And then one night I was just kind of laying on the couch with my head on the armrest and my heart started beating like really hard. I mean, it was fast. But it also was just like really hard and I was like, am I having high blood pressure? I need to take my blood pressure. And so like my husband has a automatic blood pressure cuff monitor thing and he uh, takes his blood pressure because um, his doctor gave him that and luckily he had like just taken it in to have the doctor compare it to their readings in the office to make sure it was accurate. So I was expecting my heart I mean, my blood pressure to be high, but when I took it, you know, normal is systolic over diastolic, bottom number 60 to 90, top number 90 to 140. And that is what's like considered in the normal range, even though like they kind of split that up into like pre-hypertension, hypertension, like whatever. And my blood pressure was like barely normal and it was like low. And I was like, whoa, that's completely unexpected. That's really weird. It was like the lowest blood pressure that I've ever really noticed happening. So I called my doctor and just told him about it. And they had me do like a telehealth visit. And um, no, I take that back. They had me come in. I'm sorry. They squeezed the, it was, my doctor wasn't there. It was a different doctor and she squeezed me in on her lunch break. And they did the sitting, lying, or lying, sitting, standing blood pressure. And um, it was like kind of low, but again, not like technically abnormal low. And I was showing her some of the readings that I had taken that night after I had the low one because I was just freaking out and taking my blood pressure constantly. And she's like, they're all in the 90s over 60s, so technically they're normal. And I'm like, yeah, but that's low for me. I mean, I've never had blood pressures that low. And so she made a follow up with my personal doctor that just wasn't there yet, got me in for the first available. And she told me it was up to me if I wanted to not take the atenolol, um, but I guess like to take my blood pressure first to make sure my blood pressure wasn't so low. So the next morning I get up and I took my blood pressure and it was like 84 over like 58 something like that like it was too low and I'm like okay so I guess I don't take my atenolol but like I felt bad and it kind of freaked me out I called the on-call doctor and I get up really early so and I'm sure they do too I'm sure they were up but they were probably getting ready for work and I'm like what do I do do I not take my atenolol like what I don't know what to do and you know I'm on it to stop palpitations and a fast heart rate so like what do I do and the doctor was like you need to not take it and so I didn't take it. My heart started beating. I don't know if part of it was just like a rebound effect of coming off the medication after I've been on it for so many years, but, or if it was just me getting used to it beating super, super fast again, even though it never beat as fast as it does now, um, that I know of. So I didn't take the atenolol. They scheduled me to come in again. I came in, they did the orthostatic blood pressures again, which is where you're um, laying, sitting, standing, and you know, it dropped with each postural change. Um, so they did an EKG and when I laid down, my pulse was in the normal range. It was like 80. It was a normal EKG. Thank God. And, um, they, she just said, yeah, I don't think you should take the atenolol anymore until you see your primary, like your actual primary care doctor, like your normal one. So they got me in for a first available appointment 
with her, which was like a week later. Well, they also told me to start taking my blood pressure like about 30 minutes to an hour after I woke up because apparently when you first wake up, your blood pressure is all weird anyway. And told me to take it at night before I go to bed. So I was like, okay. And I started doing that and I was logging it in my phone and they were just staying 90s over 60s. And um, they had me take it sitting and standing both morning and night. And when I would stand up, my blood pressure would always drop more than it was when I was sitting down. And it was like barely normal, but my pulse was higher. So I'm like, okay. So then one night I was taking my blood pressure and I sat down to take it and it was normal. Well, I stood up and like they told me to try to wait a couple of minutes before you start because I guess it's normal that everyone, when you stand up, like right when you stand up, the blood kind of pools due to gravity down into your legs and your feet. But your autonomic nervous system regulates that. And it's normal for your heart to increase a little bit because it's trying to get more blood back up to, you know, your brain so that you have oxygen. And I started getting that same weird feeling that I had when I was walking in my, right below my heart and my sternum area in like the very top of my stomach area. And it is an indescribable feeling. It was very weird. I was like super nauseous. I, so when I stood up taking this blood pressure, this is what was happening. I started getting like really weird feeling in my head. I started getting really bad tunnel vision. And I remember telling my husband, I'm like, Josh, my blood pressure is going to be low. Like there's something wrong. And I was like, oh my God, I don't think I can even stand up long enough for the cuff to like keep inflating and like take my blood pressure. And he's like watching me and I'm like standing right in front of the couch. And it was all I could do to stand up to get that reading. And the best way I can describe what was going through my mind is I was literally feeling the life leave my body. I sat down as soon as it finished the reading and the blood pressure was um, 72 over 39, which is very, very low. And my heart rate actually did not increase, which my doctors, my doctor told me that's actually an inappropriate heart rate response because my heart rate should have been really high trying to compensate for that. Um, so when I sat down, I couldn't get the feeling to stop and we put my legs up on the ottoman and I just like sank as low down into the couch as I could trying to get my feet up and to be flat. And I, I fainted for the first time in my life. And like my husband's like trying to like wake me up and like I kind of wake up and then I just faint again. And then I kind of wake up and then I just faint again. And this just goes on and on and on and on. So he put the blood pressure cuff back on my arm. So technically I was like almost completely lying, but still kind of sitting up just a little bit. And he was just like, that reading can't be right. I remember him saying at some point, that reading just can't be right. Like you must not have the cuff on correctly. So he took it. And I've already kind of laid back down. It was still really, really low. And I'm fainting over and over and over. We have no idea what's going on. So he called 911. And while he was on the phone with them, he just kept taking it over and over. As soon as it gave a reading, he took it again. It was just low, 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 low. And like it was, it finally started kind of coming back up really, really slowly. So the ambulance gets here. You know, they're taking my blood pressure taking like all my vital signs and um, they get me in the ambulance. Of course, they're starting an IV, trying to give me fluids, hook me up to the EKG and um, they told me my EKG was normal. I get to the hospital and like, I guess my husband was driving in the car. Somehow he ended up there and he found me, but um, the EKG was basically normal. Uh, it did say something about lower or like an inferior T wave or T wave abnormality, something like that. And it said to consider lower ischemia, which I guess is like where part of your heart dies. So they did a bedside echocardiogram and they let me watch them do it. They told me it was normal. The EKG, other than just like that weird thing, was normal. 
I was in sinus rhythm and you know, they had me like lay down, take my blood pressure, take it sitting, then take it standing, walk me around, take it. My pulse was incredibly high. Um, and my blood pressure barely, and like, they just kept giving me fluids, kept giving me fluids. And it just barely got to where it was still normal. Like it was barely in the nineties over sixties. So this doctor comes in, I guess she was like the supervising doctor. And I was telling her, I'm like, you know, I get these weird feelings in that area, but it's like, I have this overwhelming need to like squat down. I was like, I just start feeling weird. And my body's like, Oh, you need to squat down. So I squat down and then I kind of feel better and just went through all these symptoms and my blood pressure being like super low and my heart rate being super high. Like, walking from the living room to the bedroom, which isn't far, my pulse will jump up from, like, 80s or 90s resting to 130-something, 140-something. So, she scheduled me for a follow-up with the doctor, and I'm like, well, I already have one. And she was like, well, I'm putting in another one just in case. So, I go to my doctor, and she's looking through everything, and we're talking, and she's like, I'm going to send you to a cardiologist. So, I go to the cardiologist. And she ordered an, and I'm in a different, a different like physician practice now, a different group. Um, so she ordered another Holter monitor that I wore for 24 hours. This time I only had 19 PVCs or like skipped heartbeats and wanted another echo, like at one of their offices where like all they do are echocardiograms. Um, and I guess they're like a little more clear or more in depth or something than the ones they do at the bedside when you're in the ER. So I've had several instances where I felt like I was going to faint since then. And I, I have to sit down I or have to lay down. And like sometimes I don't feel 100% better. Um, usually it really helps when you lay down because then your blood pressure comes back up. But basically, I just went through all kinds of tests, blood work, seeing the cardiologist, doing the monitor, doing the echocardiogram, um, still following up with my PCP. And I was officially di diagnosed with POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. So basically what happens is when you change positions from either lying to sitting or sitting to standing or lying to standing, your blood pressure drops just like everyone else that should, but it drops like too much. And even though your heart starts beating faster, it just like can't, like it doesn't get the signal correctly from that autonomic nervous system. So your pulse just goes way high, but your blood pressure stays low. So basically the treatment for it, since I went through all the diet, you know, all the diet agnostic stuff is I have to eat a ton of salt. They didn't even put any limit on it. Just as much salt as I can stand and drink extra fluid. So I have to drink between 2.5 and three liters per day. Um, like not all at one time, but I have to do that in conjunction with the salt. And that's supposed to like raise my blood pressure. Um, I have to be really careful bending over or changing positions too quickly. And if I start having feelings that my blood pressure is dropping or if I'm dizzy or have that any of that tunnel vision, I'm supposed to sit or lay back down, elevate my legs and just drink a huge glass of water. And the other thing um, is I have to wear waist high compression stockings. So they look a lot like tights. Mine are black. They look like black tights and they go from toe to like way high on my abdomen and they have graduated pressure. So it helps to keep the blood from pooling in your legs. Therefore, it's supposed to help keep your um, blood pressure up and keep your heart from having to try to beat super fast, even though my heart just beats really fast now all the time and I have to worry about my blood pressure. And, um, I did take a couple pictures. My husband took them for me. Um, I have shorts on today, which is really weird because I don't like to wear shorts. But with the tights on under them, I guess I don't feel as exposed. Um, but I wanted to take a picture to show you what they look like. So you can see on my legs, I'm wearing the compression stockings, the tights. But they, like I have on high rise shorts and they still come higher than the top of my shorts. So you can see that in the picture. I'm wearing this bra, which is a workout bra. So it's not like a lingerie or you know, secret, like shouldn't show anybody bra. It's an exercise bra, but I have it on and I t took my shirt off so that you can see the stockings come up above my shorts and they come above my belly button. They can't, they come really close to being 
fairly right under my breasts. So I have to wear those all the time, except at night when I'm sleeping. Um, so I've done that. Uh, the doctor did, the cardiologist also told me that if I had really tight leggings, because like I've gotten some leggings for working out, that I could also wear them either over the stockings or I could try not to wear the stockings if I just really didn't want to, if it was a hot day or whatever, just to try. Um, because they, the ones I got do offer a lot of abdominal compression, but they're not, you know, they're not compression stockings, so they don't have that graduated pressure. So I'm wearing um, 20 to 30 uh, millimeters of mercury, um, which is how uh, stockings, which is, I guess, how much pressure it gives you. Um, so the doctor, doctor told me to do that. So it's basically just maintenance of my symptoms. You know, sit down, lay down, drink a lot of water. If you feel like you're going to faint, um, there's really not much they can do at the hospital, according to all of the doctors and the cardiologists. Um, basically all they do if you go to the hospital is just give you a bunch of IV fluid. And, um, you know, they said, the cardiologist finally just told me, like, if my heart rate gets to 180 and I can't get it down to go to the hospital, if it stays that way, or if my blood pressure is low and it stays too low and I can't get it back up, then go to the hospital. But other than that, it's just kind of managing your symptoms at home. And the other thing she said is to exercise, 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 just like exercise as much as you can because it'll strengthen your heart and it'll strengthen your muscles and um, it's supposed to be really good for you. But it's hard because a lot of times when you start exercising, you know, your blood pressure kind of drops. And, you know, she was saying that she has a patient who's a runner and that like if he doesn't stay like super hydrated and like super hydrate before he runs that he just passes out you know he just faints while he's running so there's the whole fainting aspect of it so like i can't drive right now because i still haven't gotten my blood pressure high enough i guess and i'm still having issues with it she said i'm in a flare-up right now um and they think the flare-up may have been caused from like a combination of me losing weight and then starting exercising and being on a blood pressure medication um, but I'm off the blood pr pressure medication, haven't taken it. I have noticed that the night that I ended up having that really low blood pressure when the ambulance had to take me to the hospital, it had been like an hour after I had taken my Latuda. And so the doctor at the hospital, I guess, looked it up and mentioned that, I guess, in the side effects of Latuda, it can cause hypotension, which is low blood pressure. So it can just cause generalized low, blo low blood pressure. Um, it can cause exercise-induced hypertension and orthostatic hypertension, which is where when you lay, sit, and stand, your blood pressure drops. So I spoke with my psychiatrist, and the lowest milligram they make of Latuda is 20 milligrams, and it's been a lifesaver for me. But he told me to try to go down to 10 milligrams because the ER doctor wanted me just to quit taking it. And I'm like, I don't know, you know. And so the psychiatrist was like, you know, just cut it in half, take 10 milligrams, See how it affects your blood pressure and then we'll go from there I'll see you again in four weeks to see what happened but of course he's super awesome call me if you have any problems or need to talk to me sooner and we're doing telehealth visits still so I even online on the Latuda website on like every website I can find it says do not cut Latuda in half the pharmacist told me do not cut Latuda in half but my psychiatrist told me to do it and I discussed it with my pharmacist and he said, well, if your psychiatrist told you to do it, you know, follow his instructions. So I have a little pill cutter and I cut it and um, I've been taking 10 milligrams now for month, month and a half and it's still helping me. I am struggling a little bit more. I'm hoping I kind of adjust to that, but my blood pressure ha actually has went up a little bit, but like I'm also eating a ton of salt. I'm also ha drinking a lot of fluid. Um, I'm taking vitamins now, which has a lot of B12 vitamins in it, which I guess help regulate your blood pressure. And I wear my compression stockings every single day, the waist high. Um, some of the things I've noticed and I've seen online that other people have talked about, I have a really hard time taking a shower, especially in the mornings because your I guess your blood pools to your legs and you're just standing there in the shower and you don't have any compression on or anything. And the hotter the water is, apparently the worse it is. Um, but what happens is like your knees and like sometimes part of your legs, they turn this weird reddish purplish color. 
So I'm not sure if that's just from like blood pooling in my legs, but it's like a common thing I've seen mentioned in my research of POTS and I've joined a Facebook group for POTS and all this stuff and people talk about that. So I guess that's one of the side effects. So um, I guess I'll try to show you, like I'm just on the bed, but like standing up on the bed. So like these are the stockings. They go all the way down my toes. These are my shorts. It comes all the way up above my pants. My belly button's right here, so it's above my belly button. It's graduated, so it gets more pressure at the top. And it's supposed to keep it from pulling in my legs as bad and just kind of help with getting the blood pressure, the blood back to where it should be. So, that is my struggle with POTS. I'm still learning about it. I am working very hard to overcome the symptoms and be able to, like, do my life, I guess. Um, I have been doing the elliptical more than walking because if I start feeling like I'm going to faint or having problems, I'm supposed to stop then and I'm at home so I can just go lay down. If it happens when I'm out walking, like, I feel like I'm screwed because like, what would I do? I mean, I'm with my husband, but like, I'm not at home in my safety zone. I don't have a couch to lay on. It's, it's just weird. But like, we've invested in a ton of Garmin stuff. We have a heart rate monitor. Um, we wear that every, or I do. I wear it every time I work out and it's continuous and like real time heart rate monitoring. It goes to an app on my phone so I can literally see where my heart rate's at. Um, currently when I go exercising outside of the house, I'm supposed to keep my pulse between 130 and 145. And then like if I'm doing the elliptical, I'm allowed to try to do it a little harder if I can. And I just have to make sure my heart rate doesn't go over 180 at all. And, um, you know, if it's just like staying really high and, and I start having symptoms, like I can slow down on the elliptical. So like when you watch me do the elliptical, I'm like fast, slow, really, really, really slow, like so slow, it kind of hurts just from being so slow. And eventually I get to a point where it just is staying pretty much right at 180. And so I have to go ahead and, you know, do a cool down and just stop. Um, but when I first started the elliptical, I could only do it for four minutes and 29 seconds before my heart rate got to 180, which is my max heart rate, um, per the cardiologist. And I felt like I was going to die. And I don't think I had compression stockings on that first time. When I got the compression stockings for the first time, I was able to go like 13 minutes and something. I've had a couple days where I went for an hour. The first time almost killed me. And then we just started walking a lot and like walking sometimes six, six and a half miles. Um, if I could watching my heart rate, sometimes when we're walking, I cannot control the heart rate. Like it goes higher than the 145 and I just can't get it back down. If I go up a hill, it goes way high. And sometimes I just can't get it back down and we have to go ahead and come home. But like, if I'm having a good day, there's good days and bad days with this. If I'm having a good day, I can go a little bit longer sometimes. Or if we walk really slow, I can go a little bit longer. Um, and I do prefer that to the elliptical, but like I said, I'm at least at home where I can lay down if I have to. And I'm just trying to build my heart stronger. And I just feel like there's so much more I could say about this. Um, but it's a lifelong illness, no known cures. It's just trying to treat the symptoms. And I guess the main things are exercise, drinking tons of fluid, um, losing my train of thought here, uh, tons of salt. I think I said compression stockings already. Sorry. Um, it does kind of cause brain fog sometimes, but I'm still kind of struggling with anxiety and depression from yesterday. I'm getting really anxious about going on the camping trip this weekend because, like, I have pots now. What if I have an episode and we're out in the middle of the woods? Like, what are we going to do? And, you know, I have to drink three liters of water a day now, and, like, I don't know how much water we can take with us. And, you know, whatever. We have filters and the UV light and all that stuff for water, but... Um, yeah, I'm just really anxious about it. It's like the first time, like, really leaving the house, like, definitely overnight, other than the hospital stays, since I've had POTS and been having all these symptoms. But I'm going to work at it. I'm going to exercise, keep doing my salt and my water and my compression stockings, and give you guys updates. If you have any questions, just post them in the comment below, comment section. I will reply to every comment. And, um... You can find me on my other social media. I have a Patreon now, a TikTok, an Instagram, a Twitter, 
and I will post all the links to those. Um, I've posted a lot of pictures on my Instagram of like the before and after of my weight loss and um, the pictures that my husband took. I'm going to try to figure out how to get them on this video somehow, but I'm not actually that techie. So if I can't, I'll post them to my Instagram if you want to go there and just like see what they look like when I'm actually standing up and not trying to stand up on the bed. Um, I don't really have a space for my YouTube videos yet and background and all that stuff, but hopefully that's coming. And um, anyway, if you have the disorder, because I guess it's not like super rare, but it's not super common either. Like not a ton of people have it. Um, but also online, this is just interesting. They're saying that since the pandemic started, that people who have either gotten COVID actual or the COVID vaccines, that lots of people are being diagnosed with POTS. I mean, compared to normal, like normally, like it's not like a ton of people are getting it, but a lot more than normal are being diagnosed with POTS and having all these issues. Um, so for me, my blood pressure drops really low. My pulse goes really high and it's just, I can feel it beating on my chest. It's horrible and I can't drink caffeine anymore even though I made my weight loss goal this morning which was 120 and I was actually 119.2 so my husband rewarded me with a soda this would have been diet caffeine free coke but they did not have it um, so I decided because today is like a special day and it's the one-year anniversary of our chihuahua passing away that I was just gonna have the regular diet coke with caffeine in it and I, I don't know maybe I won't sleep tonight but anyway so far my heart doesn't feel like way different from having the caffeine so I'm hoping I can get by on just like one two liter of diet coke without it like making my symptoms way horrible but anyway um, please follow me on my social media please like subscribe and comment to this video and like I said I'll reply to all comments and um, I guess maybe I'll post my email if you guys want it. I mean, it's just my like username on Gmail, so um, uh, it's the same username as everywhere, uncratdog at gmail.com. And so you can always email me. Just When you email me, just be like, hey, I'm username from YouTube or where, whatever media you're following me on. Just like remind, like remind me who you are, and I'll email you back as soon as I get the chance, which is usually like if I'm not sleeping. Um, cause I really like naps <laughs> and we go to bed really early and we get up early. So I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm trying to be really, really responsive, but thank you guys for watching. If you made it to the end, God bless you. Thank you for watching. And I hope that what I've said would be, um, helpful to some of you guys. Um, it does make my anxiety and my depression worse. Cause it's like, I have this lifelong medical condition now. So I'm still trying to accept that and integrate it into my life and my treatment and trying to like balance having POTS with all of the different mental health issues that I have. So it's been a struggle. It's been just like a difficult few months and hopefully it'll just keep getting better. But like I said, if you have POTS or have any questions about it, know anybody that has it, anything, just Comment down below. I'd be really interested to see. Or if you have had it for a while and you have any tips or tricks or, you know, experiences you want to share, I'd really appreciate it. That'd be really awesome. You'll be educating me and everyone who reads the comments. So I'm going to get off here for now. I really appreciate all you guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. And I hope you all have a great day. Okay, bye.